Goedenavond, welkom bij College Tour. Dit is jaargang 10, aflevering 1. En we hebben een droomgast, althans, dat vinden we zelf. Zijn laatste album is overal op nummer 1 beland. Iedereen kent zijn nummers. Stadion Arena's zijn totaal uitverkocht. En ook hier, waar ik vanavond ben, in de Ziggo Dome... staan op dit moment, terwijl wij hier zijn... 17.000 fans te wachten op zijn optreden zometeen op het podium hier. Maar voordat het zover is, zijn wij zijn voorprogramma, College Tour. Samen met 100 studenten interview ik in de Ziggo Dome in Amsterdam... Ed Sheeran. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me. How is Amsterdam treating you till now? It's good, yeah, it's good. I have, uh, my parents came out, so I've been... Yeah, here as well? Yeah, I've been hanging with them, and I've got mates that live here and mates that are visiting, so it's been pretty good. We always start the show with the question, what kind of student were you, Ed Sheeran? Uh, well, at school, because mm -hmm. I, I didn't... I know. Yeah, well, I went, actually, no, I went for a week. I went for a week. Sorry, for a week to school? No, to uh, college. Ah, okay, yeah. College, yeah. But um, as a student, if there was something that I was interested in, I'd work really hard at it. Um, but I didn't see the point in learning things that I, I wasn't personally going to use, mm. like learning trigonometry at school. How old were you when you like, so, thought, it, okay, this is enough, I'm going to do something else? You know, I got to like 16 and I was like, there, I can't. Uh, I want to be a musician, and to do that, I just have to go out mm. and do it. And play. Talking about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, how did you score when you were in school? <laughs> Probably, like, there wasn't much rock and roll, because I was into, like, really, really, like, emotional acoustic guitar music, mm. obviously. Uh, <laughs> drugs, I, you know, I experimented when I was really young and then stopped it, uh, so I... What did you try? Uh, I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> but no, but I basically, I, be I peaked too soon, basically. All of my friends started getting into it when I started playing music. So I'd go home and they'd be taking drugs that I, didn't, I couldn't even pronounce. And uh, <laughs> like, I just kind of missed that phase, mm. basically. Um, so yeah, I peaked too soon. One category left. Sex. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. It happened, yeah. Not as frequently as I'd have liked it to, but it definitely happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's open up the hall for the students here. Uh, first question over there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are being bullied right now, and uh, I was one of those people, and, um, well, apparently you had a quite difficult time too. Um, what are life lessons that you've learned that you can give to children who have a difficult time at school right now? Uh, bullies are, are, are only uh, afraid of what's different, like, and... That's, that's why it comes out, because they, they don't get it. They don't get uh, someone wanting to be individual and, and normal. And from my experience, all the most successful people ever have been themselves. And uh, someone who has been a bully at school fits in with the crowd, and then they continue to fit in with the crowd, and they live a very, very, very boring life, <laughs> and then they die. Whereas someone who doesn't fit in with the crowd goes on and achieves amazing things, inspired more people that don't fit in the crowd, and, and that's how the world works. It's, um, it's just part of life that there are mean people in the world, but no one can be you better than you, and you just have to remember that, that being individual is, is really cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think... We win in the end, you know. Over here. Hi, Ed. Hey. I was wondering, um, have you ever tried to write a song um, about a certain feeling you had, but you couldn't get it on paper? So uh, you tried different approaches, maybe. And what would be a good tip uh, being a songwriter? Um, I think what's good about songwriting is you can kind of get out any feeling you want to. I think that the, the, when you have sort of anxiety or depression, or anything that gets you down, the one way to get rid of it is expressing it in. It could be a song, it could be art, it could be poetry, it could be playing a game of football, but just getting out that emotion, I think, is really important. So um, if you have trouble with it, just write anything, even if it's like shit, even if it sounds terrible, just do something to get, to, to, to get it out, I'd say. Next one. Um, you come across as a very normal guy, but um, in any race you talk about the downsides of uh, fame. Are you afraid it will one day eat you up? And what helps you to keep your balance? 
rec recently it's been a bit weird because I've found uh, things that I say get taken really, not even out of, yeah, like out, out of context and edited and then put in a like headline and then someone will read it and then that'll, that'll be their opinion of me. There was another thing where someone said, um, do you want to be bigger than Adele? And I was like, who doesn't? And then they was like, he thinks he's bigger than Adele. And it was like this whole, this whole thing. So like, that's one thing that I'm trying to get round. What is actually wrong with uh, having the ambition to be bigger than Adele? <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't fucking, <laughs> I really, like, that baffled me. That baffled me. And I think it's this, like, no, there, there she is. Uh, I think it's this, um, you're, People, do, again, going back to the individual thing, people don't like things that uh, uh, dream big. You don't, like, you, you, you're meant to, like, just sing and, like, not want to be the biggest mm. art, artist. And... But why is it a suspect thing to be ambitious and why do people start... Um, they put you on a pedestal Basically, and then they what, cut what, your head off? What I've learned from it is don't fucking say anything and just keep your mouth shut because, like, people don't want to hear it. So, like, like every, I, I promise you, every single artist that you listen to thinks that. Every single one goes, yeah, I hope one day I could be that successful. Uh, not, not, not just not for financial reasons, but mm -hmm. just to have that many people listening to your music. It, this isn't a financial, I don't want to be richer than Adele, I don't want to be, like, make more money, it's just I would like as many people who listen to her music to listen to my music. Hi man, you uh, already accomplished so much in life, so is there still a big dream for you to chase? Uh, M not musically, I kind of like I've gone way beyond what I wanted to achieve. So like I've like if it, if it ended today, I'd be like, all right, cool, like that's 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 fine. Uh, Is that but, serious? It's so hard to yeah, believe. Because... No, well, my dream was to play Shepherd's Bush Empire in London and sell a hundred thousand albums. That was my dream for the whole of my life. And uh, the week the album came out, we did a hundred thousand and played Shepherd's Bush Empire. So at the end of that week, I was like. <laughs> no, <laughs> what do I do now? So like I don't. Yeah, I've kind of like achieved. You peak too young. I've achieved what I wanted to achieve, but I do think the, the meaning of life is to uh, start a family and raise it well and put good people into the world. So yeah, I think that's the, that's the end goal. Uh, what's your favorite moment from, your favorite memory from your childhood? I think when I was like 13, well, basically what Castle on the Hill's about, when I was like 13, 14, and me and my mates had like, well, I actually borrowed my mate's BMX because I didn't have one, but we used to, like, ride around little country roads with a BMX, steal little cans of cider, put them in a backpack and, like, ride up to a hill, drink them, do things we weren't really meant to. And, like, that's, like, those summers I really remember. And that's, like... I would really like my kids to experience that. Yeah. Yeah. But now smartphones are here. Like, no-one fucking yeah. does that anymore. <laughs> Everyone's just inside playing Xbox and going on Twitter. Like, kids need to eat worms again and stuff. <laughs> climb, <laughs> climb, climb trees and eat worms and get muddy and, yeah. That's a good one. Well, on that note, we always end this show with... Um, what is your best advice to the students here and the people who are watching this show at home? Uh, it, like, literally anything you want to do in life, you can achieve if you work hard enough. Anything. Anything. If you want to, like, if you... If you choose the most weird thing in the world and everyone looks at you like you're fucking crazy and you're like, you're never going to achieve that. that. Exactly that happened to me. I remember dropping out of school and everyone went, well, that's a bad idea. And, <laughs> and, it, did, and it did take a while. And it, you do have a lot of um, times where you think it's never going to happen and it's, it, you're failing and you made the wrong decision and you should have just fucking been safe and done what other people thought you should do. But I'm, I'm telling you, if you put in the work, and I think uh, there's a 10,000 hours rule that if you put 10,000 hours into something eventually you become an expert in it but if you choose something and you and you go for it enough it will happen the key is not to have a plan b don't set up any any way any way that you can be like ah oh, do you know what if this doesn't work i can just do that there has to be like no other option it has to be like either this works or i'm fucked and you just go for it until it and, and, until it does uh, cheering <laughs> great really good, hey?